Folks, this is the Eosheen Falcon 210. Uh, and I know what you're thinking right now. Why is Joshua Bardwell, quote unquote, the drone racing engineer, reviewing a ready to fly Banggood special <laughs> budget quadcopter when mostly what you see on my channel is a little bit higher end stuff like custom builds and so forth. And the reason is, and that was my first thought when Banggood reached out to me and said, hey, would you like to re review this product? My first thought was, well, that's not really my speed. But then I thought, you know what? Let's not be a snob. Let's not be a snob. This hobby, I, I want to help new people get into this hobby. That's a big reason why I do what I do is to help you get over the curve and enjoy the hobby instead of pulling your hair out trying to solve problems. And so why not take a ready to fly budget quadcopter like this and if I'm uh, the, you know, the kind of tuner that I hold myself out to be, let's let's work up some PIDs to help people who've bought this fly it a little bit better and enjoy it a little bit more. And, and that's why this product is here. But I have to tell you that uh, as close as this product comes to the mark, it has a couple things that are wrong with it that mean that I simply cannot recommend that you buy it. So I'm gonna tell you what I think is good about this product and I'm gonna tell you the two things about it that I think mean that you shouldn't buy it and I'm gonna tell you what I think you should buy instead. Let's get into it. Let me tell you what's good about this product first because I think Yashin got really close to doing this right. Uh, what's good about the product, first of all, the frame is reasonably solid. It's a, it's a, it's an okay design. Now it's an, it's a closed frame design with side plates, which is because this is going to be for beginners who need their electronics protected. The actual layout of the electronics inside the frame is pretty decent. Stuff's not rattling around in there. It's reasonably secured. I think it's going to hold up to crashes just fine. Uh, if we look at the older copter, the Eosheen Racer, that's the one with the smiley face lights on front. It had these plastic arms, and uh, if you watch Rotor Riots, I think Rotor Riot did a video where they flew those, and they tried to get them to fly as best as they could, and in one flight session, they broke the arms. Uh, so that was a major flaw in the earlier version. This one has your standard carbon fiber plate on bottom, you know, a very, very normal design like you see all over the place. So the frame is pretty solid. The flight controller in here is an SP Racing F3. You can also order this with a NAS or a CC3D, and I don't know why you ever would. Uh, stop selling it with the NAS and the CC3D. Just sell it with the SP Racing F3. That's clearly the right choice. The video uh, transmitter, very nice that they've included a video transmitter with a push button channel and band selection instead of dip switches, especially for the kind of person who's gonna buy a ready to fly copter. They're not gonna to wanna to be fiddling with dip switches. And you got a nice cutout here so you can access it very easily. Very, very good. The camera mount has a little bit of up tilt, not too much up tilt, maybe 20 degrees, maybe 25. I'm not sure, I'm just eyeballing it. Camera mount has a little bit of up tilt and the motors have a little bit of front tilt, which is not actually my preference. I prefer flat motors but it's only 10 degrees, I think, of tilt, and, and it does mean that a beginner will be able to fly a little bit faster with a little bit less camera up tilt. Since it's designed to fly FPV, the fact that it's not gonna hover level, that won't really matter. You're never gonna be looking at it, uh, line of sight, probably. So uh, that's acceptable. Uh, it's got a kind of cool LED system on here with tail lights and, and, and uh, lights here on the on the uh, arms. And <laughs> when you when you turn left, the left ones flash. When you turn right, the right ones flash. And that's that's kind of silly, but it's also kind of cute. Uh, there's a nice little uh, set of switches here to let you turn the LEDs on and off individually. And that again is a nice, they didn't have to do this. They could have just left this out, but this lets you turn all, this one is for all the LEDs, and then this one is for the front, the back, and the side, the arms. I'm not sure which one is which, but it's very thoughtful that they put this here to let you have the LEDs on or off as you so desire. The transmitter that comes with this is the Yashin i6, which of course is the same as the Flysky i6, the FSI6, and that's the same receiver it's got in there as well. And, and this is a pretty decent transmitter. I mean, even if you're not buying this exact copter, if you're needing to get into the hobby on a budget and you either you're not sure whether it's gonna be for you or you just don't have $200 to spend right now, this is a fantastic choice. It's a very, very decent transmitter, especially at the price. I think it's about 60 bucks for the transmitter and a receiver. So this is very nice that they've included this. And this, you could use this if you, you could keep using this even if you later outgrow this copter or you get more copters, you can get the, the FSI-6 receiver to go with it. The FSI-6 receiver that's in here actually supports 
the IBUS protocol, which is a serial protocol, and, and without going into too much detail, serial protocols have less latency than analog protocols under clean flight and, and give you a better control and better feel of the copter. Uh, this The FSI 6 receiver that's in here is actually not using the IBUS. It's set up for parallel PWM. I wish that uh, Yashin would ship this configured with the IBUS protocol instead of parallel PWM. But okay, it's probably not for a beginner who's buying a ready to fly, probably not that big a deal. You can see here in the back that I've modded the antennas. They just come hanging out the back and I actually have modded them a little bit to get, make it a little less likely that they're going to get into the props and get chopped up. I've just put a uh, zip tie here and shrink wrapped them to the zip tie. That's They just come dangling out the back and that's a real shame. I think that's a, a little bit of a disservice to ship it that way because they're going to get chopped up and, and ruined and, and, a, and a beginner may not even know that that's an issue. So, so many things that, that are p potentially done right here but there's two things that really kill this, and they mean that I simply cannot recommend that you buy this copter. And the two things are, number one, the camera. The camera is awful. It's awful. When I first went to Maiden this copter, I thought the exposure on my goggles was way off because the ground was just completely black. So I adjusted the exposure on my goggles all the way up and nothing, it didn't fix it. And the issue is that whenever the sky is the least bit in frame, the camera's exposure adjusts for the sky and the ground just goes completely black. And I would go so far as to say this copter is not safe to fly. I was able to fly it around my property because I know my property very well, but if I was in an area that I wasn't familiar with, or if I was in an area where, for example, at a park where you, I'm flying with a spotter, but it's possible that like a dog walker or a jogger will come into the area and I'll need to avoid them and, and, and safely land, you, you'll, be, you'll be flying and you're flying and you're fine and then as soon as you pitch back and the sky comes into frame the ground just goes completely dark and you can't see where you're landing and then you drop the throttle and as you drop maybe if you're lucky the sky goes out of frame and you can see again it's just I would not consider this safe for an experienced pilot to fly in, an, in a really unknown environment and for an inexperienced pilot to be flying in an unknown environment forget it so, so the camera is an absolute deal breaker in my opinion the other thing that's an absolute deal breaker here on this is the ESCs. Uh, the ESCs, they're, they're fairy ESCs. They're not running Beale Heli or Simon K. They're running some custom fairy firmware. And I don't know what's going on, there, but it definitely does not have braking. So you already have very poor tunability and very poor uh, handling characteristics. But then the spool up time on these ESCs is preposterous. Like when I was trying to calibrate min throttle, you're raising, you're pressing the up arrow and you're raising the throttle on the motors tab and it goes whatever, uh, you know, 1050, 1051, 1052, and let's say they start spinning at 1055. So you hit 1055 and they go 1048, like a freaking jet engine spooling up or something, like a turbine spooling up. These things spool up and then they idle down. It's ridiculous. It's just, it's preposterous. And I thought, well, I'll fly it and I'll see how it goes, but I, I, it's just not, it's not anything like tunable. Um, it's, it's, so I wanted to give you guys some PIDs that I thought could make, make the best of this copter, but av having flown it with the camera being simply unsafe to fly in my opinion, and with the ESCs being really bad, I'm not even going to, I'm, I, there's just, Nothing I can really feel like I can do to make this copter fly any better than it already is, short of replacing the ESCs. Another nit that I have to pick with this copter is that it ships with an OSD. Okay, so it's great. It's an MW OSD, uh, and it's ready to go. But it comes configured with all sorts of additional stuff on screen that's never going to get used. So it shows RSSI, and it shows milliamp hours, and it shows amps but it's not actually set up to, to, to display that information, so they just read zero all the time, right? Which is kind of, it's kind of a waste of screen real estate. And you can't easily turn off all that information because in order to configure an MWOSD, you need to use the Arduino interface or you need to use the MW GUI configurator app and you need to connect directly to the OSD. But the problem is this OSD has a uh, custom pins, pin header. It's got a micro pin header that to plug in to the F3, the SB Racing F3. Uh, so you can't easily plug this into your FTDI adapter 
uh, to reprogram it. So I wish they would have just shipped it with the unused stuff turned off, but that would have required them to flash a custom firmware to it and flash a custom config, and, and they didn't take that step. The other thing that is super annoying is that the OSD comes plugged in on UART1, which means it conflicts with USB. It means that as soon as you power the copter via battery, you cannot access the copter via the configurator GUI. So if you want to do, for example, motor calibration or, or min throttle calibration, you can't do that because as soon as you fl plug in the flight battery, you lose the GUI because now the OSD is conflicting with the GUI, right? Because they're on the same UART. And the thing is, the SP Racing F3 has three freaking UARTs and none of them are being used. So uh, all you have to do is open this up and move the plug over to UART2 and bam, you're done. Now you don't have that problem, but they didn't do that. And I'm gonna show you how to do that in an upcoming video where I'll show you how to, how to make the most of this at least. Uh, I will throw a bone to Iashin and say that when I've talked about this copter in various forums, many people have told me that the Iashin 180 is the one where Iashin finally got it right. Like the Iashin Racer had the plastic arms that were just terrible and broke at the drop of a hat. And now this is Gen 2, if you will, which is the Iashin Falcon, where they got so many things right, but they still, there's a few things that just, I can't recommend that you buy it. And then people have said, no, no, the Iashin 180, that's a good one. And nobody has had anything bad to say about it. I can't personally vouch for it, but I can say that if you're thinking of buying this copter, instead you should just forget about it and go research the Iashin 180 and see if that one is getting good reviews and see if there are any issues with it. Well, people are telling me that it is a much better copter than this one. So I wish they'd sent me this that one to review instead of this one so I could do something useful. If you already own this copter and you feel like throwing a few bucks at it to try to make it a better copter, uh, you could get an 1177 for about 35 bucks uh, and, and it would be a solid camera. You could spend as much as maybe 50 bucks on something like a Runcam Owl, perhaps, if you feel like getting a little better low light performance. Or if you're a little concerned about space, you could get something like an 1177M. If you do that, I, you will need to reconnect the camera because I'm, I'm, I doubt it will use the same connector. But if you're lucky, you can even find a camera that uses the exact same connector as this one. I don't know what camera that would be, but then you could just swap the camera without ever having to rewire anything. The other thing you can do is you could put better ESCs on here. I do, I feel like this could fly decently. Like I, the motors, I have no reason to believe that the motors are spectacular, but they're probably not terrible. And with a decent set of ESCs, you can usually make something out of the motors. I mean, they're 2204 motors, so they probably have okay torque. And with a good set of ESCs, you could probably get a half decent flying copter out of this. The question is, do you wanna spend 40 to $60 on a new set of ESCs? And then you could use my inside out replacement technique to desolder the ESCs from here and from here. So you could swap the ESCs in without ever having to go digging around on the insides. And, um, is that, is that the kind of hassle you want to go to? If you already own this and you want to spend another 40 to 60 bucks trying to get it to fly better, perhaps that's a better option for you than trying to go spend another 200 to 250 bucks buying a whole new copter. Uh, that's your call to make. All right, well, that's my opinion of this copter. I do hope it was uh, helpful. I wish I could be a little bit more positive and I wish it flew well enough for me to even bother trying to give you PIDs for you guys who own it to try to make it fly better, but it just, the ESCs are so bad, I just don't even feel like it's worth the time trying to tune it any better than it is. Uh, so there you go. H happy flying. I mean, hey, any day in the air, right? Still better than a uh, day on the ground. Happy flying. Bye-bye.